Hello everybody, thank you for joining me today. My name is Nick and I am a dream curator at the American Family Insurance Dream Bank. In case you're not familiar with Dream Bank, we are a free resource dedicated to the inspiration and pursuit of dreams. The reason we exist is because American Family Insurance believes that your dream is the most valuable thing you'll ever own. One of my roles at Dream Bank is planning our series of crafting events, which I feel super lucky about because I am an artist and crafter in my personal life. I'm making this series of videos to bring some crafting into your home. You'll see different types of videos, some geared towards adults, some geared towards kids crafting. So there's a couple different skill levels involved, but all of these are going to try to use supplies that you should have around your house. If not, I'm going to try to give ideas to for, for substitutes that you can use. So thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy this video and we will get started. Okay, so for today's kids craft, we've got two that we're going to be doing. This first one is great for maybe some younger kids. We're going to be doing these handprint flowers that you can put on a, on a stick. Here I've put it on a bamboo skewer. You can put them on a stick from outside. You can put them on a straw or any sort of thing that you have. Uh, but the fun part will be making and decorating the, the handprint flower there. So that'll be our first one. The second one we're going to be doing, and this one is pretty fun, it is a sundial. And in making these two, I'll talk a little bit about the science behind a sundial, why we used to use them, and why we don't use them anymore today. But it's a really fun thing, especially going into, into spring. We're getting a few more sunny days out right now. It'll be a nice thing to check throughout the day and maybe make some notes or make marks and things like that. So I'm going to clear the space and then we will get started with the handprint flower. So for this craft, the supplies you're going to need are pretty simple. You're just going to want some paper. I just have blank computer paper here. Uh, this is going to be optional, but there is a glue you could use. We also are going to need some tape, probably. If you want to do some coloring, I've got a few colored pencils here. If you have that, you could do crayons, markers, whatever you have. If you've got even a set of highlighters in different colors, you could try that. Or, you know, if all else fails, you could just use a pencil and pen and just draw some decorations if you don't have any of those colors and uh, some scissors so that way you can cut it out because we will be cutting out the hand. So again, with crafts for, for younger folks, you know, you always want to make sure you have some adult supervision, especially if you're dealing with something sharp like a pair of scissors or even the pencils and things like that. So you're just going to want to make sure you're doing everything as safely as possible. So I'm going to start with one piece of paper out of my stack. And you can see on the example I made here on the back, this was just, just one piece of paper cut out, and then I just put a piece of tape right over the skewer to tape it to the, to the hand. Again, these skewers are sharp. If you're going to use something like that, be careful with that as well. I would recommend using a, like a plastic straw or something that's going to be a little bit more friendly, a little less dangerous. This is just what I had on hand, so just keep that in mind. So there is a second way to do this, too. If you didn't want this skewer showing or you wanted to decorate this side, you could essentially make a second hand and glue it to this first one and sort of sandwich them with the skewer in between. So that is probably what we'll do here. And so if I want two hands that are the same, I'm going to go ahead and fold this paper in half. And now my hand, you know, is a lot bigger. I don't think I need to make a flower that big, but I'm just going to do my best to draw a hand. And, you know, what you would do is go ahead and put your hand on the paper and outline it. Kind of like, you know, when you make a, a turkey or something for, for Thanksgiving. So we will just draw a hand here. We got a pinky, ring finger, middle finger, index finger and your thumb and you're just gonna round it off at the bottom and then the next thing you're going to want to do is decorate it and i find that it's a lot easier to decorate it first and then cut it out if you cut it out first and you're trying to color on it with pencils or pens or anything you're going to be knocking these fingers back and forth and everything like that so i'm going to do some decorations on this I'm going to do a couple using some colors, so the colored pencils, and some maybe just doing some designs with just the pen and pencil in case you don't have any colors at home. And we will be right back with that. So I just wanted to jump in here and show you what I've done so far. What I did here is I took a dark green and a light green pencil, 
and I just sectioned off a few horizontal lines. And then I went through and I made a few vertical lines with the dark green, vertical lines with the light green, some diagonal lines with the dark. So alternating colors and alternating some directions of the lines. It almost looks like kind of like a sweater pattern or something like that. Now I'm working on another finger doing some warm colors. So warm colors are red, orange, yellow, things that are kind of uh, maybe reminiscent of a flame or something like that. In this one, I'm going to do the same sort of thing, just alternating with orange and red. You know, so I, I like doing patterns where you essentially make sections and then you fill each section with a repetitive design. This one here was a little more simple. I was really just scribbling um, and doing sort of a rainbow scribble. So, you know, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and then the reverse, then from purple to blue to green to yellow to orange to red in the middle. And I thought that was kind of just a nice effect. It almost looks like a tie-dye hand or something like that. So I'm going to finish this up, and then I'll show you how it looks at the end here. Okay, so I'll show you what I've done here. And I've done a few things. So I filled each finger segment with patterns. So patterns are really fun. They're just repeating shapes or repeating lines or something like that. These were all done with colored pencils. This one, I did yellow lines going this way and then orange lines going this way. And it almost looks like a, like a plaid or a gingham or something like that. And then this one, so this is a technique actually called cross hatching. So hatching is drawing all lines in one direction, kind of like these. Cross hatching is when you do it one way and then you do it another way. And it kind of makes it look a little darker. Now I also wanted to show you how you could do this with just a pen. So if you didn't have any colored pencils. And so I made the thumb its own little segment and I kind of followed some of the, the natural lines on your hand. And then segmented it off and then filled each segment with its own little pattern. So you can see there's some horizontal lines, diagonal lines, zigzaggies, curly cues. And it just looks pretty neat. And you could do the whole hand that way. Um, this can actually be quite time consuming if you segment all the different parts off and fill each part with like a different pattern. But then when you stand back and look at it, it can actually look pretty cool. So now remember, this is a piece of paper folded in half. So what I'm going to do next is actually cut this out and it's going to give us two hands. I'll mention one of the easiest ways I found to cut this out is to actually just go from one finger to the tip of the next finger and just cut out the basic shape first. So we're just going all the way around. I'm going to keep pinching this because remember there's two pieces here and I don't want them to come apart too easily. So all the way around and then the next part is really making two cuts. We're going to come in one side and then the other side. And we're just cutting out these sort of triangles that now are in between each finger. And I just find that's easier than trying to do one big cut where you're going all the way around the whole thing. All right, so now we've got this all cut out and there's actually two that we've made. And they match up, which is really nice. It's definitely what we want. I'm going to clear some of this stuff. Always good to clean up your area. Everything has a place. That stuff will make it into my little scrap pile here. Okay, so the next step is going to be putting it on a stick or a straw or whatever you might have. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reuse this same one. So I'm just going to take the tape off. We'll put that guy over there. You're going to turn the one over that you colored on. And you can draw on this one too. It's like I said before, it's going to be a little more difficult with it being cut out. But if you want something on the back side, you can do this too, or if you just have a flat color piece of paper, like a pink piece of paper, a blue piece of paper, you can just cut this out of that and it'll add a nice accent there. So first, we are going to tape this hand down so it's not going anywhere. And then we're going to take our glue, 
Make sure you peel the, the old glue off the top. It always likes to live there. And then we are just gonna put a little bit just down each finger here. So you can see that, We've got the glue right on there. You don't need very much, just a little bit in each area. And then we'll just match that up and press it down. There we go. So now this is coming together and then I'll show you the leaves here. This is one that I, I cut out and I just made a leaf shape and I left sort of a tab at the bottom, colored it, a little bit of pen to draw some of the, the veins that are in the leaf just to make it look a little bit more realistic. You don't have to do that. And then this tab here, we're actually just going to wrap around the, the stem like that. So it's just wrapped around and folded over. You could either glue that with a little drop of glue. We're going to tape it. There, so you can see I've got two leaves on here now. You can see these do sort of just slide around. They move freely. Uh, if that's something that bothers you, you could do a little extra piece of tape and just make sure some gets on the stick, straw, or whatever it is you're using. So it's stuck down to the actual stick there. There you go, and now they're, they're staying in place pretty good. So that is our handprint flower craft. And you can make a couple of these. You can stick them in the ground outside your house if you want it to look like some are coming out of your flower bed. You can put them in a, in a jar or a vase or something if you have one around and it just will liven up the space with some fun spring vibes that you made yourself. All right, we're going to clear the space and get ready for our next craft. Okay, so the next craft we have here is making your own sundial. And there's actually a lot of interesting science that goes into this and the history of sundials is kind of interesting as well. Um, so if you're into that sort of thing like me, the actual craft itself is pretty simple, but there's just like a million and one ways to customize it. So everybody's is going to look different. And I think that's what's kind of fun with a lot of these crafts. If you have a, a sibling or your parents make them too, or if everybody makes one, they're all going to look different. And that's something I always love about instructing crafting classes is seeing how people can take all of the same supplies and make something that looks entirely different from, from their neighbor, from their, their sibling or whoever they're with. So on, the, on that note, if you do ever make any of these and you want to share photos of them, uh, you should definitely put some in the comments because I would always love to see those. So this one's pretty simple. Essentially, you're going to need a paper plate, like so, and a pencil. And so I like using the paper plate because it's raised up. You can see that there's it doesn't sit just flat. You know, this part is kind of a dish. So when you stick the pencil through, it has somewhere to go. And then that way it sort of stays upright. You don't have to use a paper plate. If you don't have paper plates, you could use a, a circle of cardboard. You could just cut one out and maybe to help the pencil stand up, you can just tape the base down or wrap something around it so it doesn't wobble too much. And the idea here is that you put this out in the sun and if you've made a part of it, if you've put numbers around this, like this is noon, for example, and you've written 12 up here, you're going to want that pointing north. Okay, so you might need to look at a map, maybe, of where you live. And this might be a fun learning activity and figure out which way faces north. So say if this is north, the sun rises in the east, which is on this side, and it's going to set in the west, which is on this side. I always remember that because it's W on the left, E on the right, and so it spells we. So west and east, sun rises in the east, sets in the west. So that would make this north and this south. All right, so you're going to want, if you make part of this facing north, and this would be sort of 12 o'clock. And so the idea, and I've got this little flashlight here, and I'll kind of show you. So the idea is 
say if the sun's over here and it's just coming up, you can see it's kind of making the shadow this way. You know, so it's on the left side. So this is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's kind of early. Right? And then as the sun moves, you know, say at this point, you can see the shadow is pointing straight up at 12. So that's how you would know it's noon. And then as it sets, it's going to go and wrap around this way. So you can see that shadow move around as it's opposite the direction of the light that's coming from it. Okay, you see that? All right, so now some important things to know and a reason why we don't use this still. So what happens is when the sun is at its highest point in the sky, that's when this is going to point to noon because it's, you know, right in the middle. Um, now, that might not actually be 12 o'clock on your watch. That is what is called solar noon, and that's a little different than our standard noon. So when you're doing this, when the sun is at the highest point in the sky, for you, your neighbor, maybe who lives 50 miles this way, it's not the highest point in the sky for them. It's going to take a little bit for the sun to move over them. So you guys might have two different noons. So every time somebody has a sundial, that's just noon for them in that area. The problem is, say, if you have a phone call at noon and you're calling somebody at noon and for them it's only 1150, then you're going to call them 10 minutes early and surprise them. OK, so that's why we made standardized time and we made time zones. So as time zones is saying if you live between here and here, everybody has the same time. You know, so that was an important decision just to make sure that everybody was on the same page and they could coordinate things. With this here, this was good, say, maybe just within one town. So everybody in the town knew what time it was based on solar time. Okay, so that's a little bit of the history behind sundials and kind of why we don't use them anymore. You know, it's not, not entirely accurate to the way the world runs. But it's a super fun activity, especially on sunny days. And you can go out, you could leave this blank and wait for the shadow to hit a certain point and then mark it off. You know, so you're going to want to check on this throughout the day and see where your shadow is. Okay. So you would take a plate and you're going to want to find the middle. If your plate has like a logo on it, that's usually right in the middle. So that's pretty easy. And you're just going to want to poke a hole. This pencil is sharp enough that it can poke a hole. If you need to use something sharp too, just go ahead and do that. Being super careful, getting an adult to help you. So you see, I just widen that and then you can just stick this down in there. Okay. So that's really all you need to do to make it. The fun part is decorating it. And what you can do for this one, I've used a lot of markers and I just made sort of a rainbow pattern around and I like this dotted line so you can see where the shadow lines up for each one. And I did 12 of them, one for each hour around the border. I thought that was just a good opportunity to do uh, a pattern. And that pattern is pretty easy to make if you like it and you want to duplicate it. It's pretty much starts with a curly this way. See that curly? And then it goes out and then a curly this way. So it's really just a, a long skinny S. And then I drew a dot. And then you could just do the same thing again and just keep going. So say... Uh, Curly this way and something like that and so that's all I did I just made my way around doing that with a marker because I wanted it to show up a lot better with this type of plate um, you can see it's sort of rough I think it's made of recycled material so markers worked way better for this so if you have something like like a marker I just keep these in a bag to keep them nice and neat but that would work pretty good for this another thing you could do is actually trace the plate and do all your decorations on a piece of paper that you would then glue on. So we'll get one piece of paper here. There's also clock faces that you can actually print out. You could print them and then cut it out and glue it to the, to the plate also. So say if you just do a rough, let's see. You've got sort of a circle here. 
Now this one's a little smaller, so you might want to confine what you're going to draw to sort of the middle here. And you can do a fun pattern, do all sorts of coloring, um, really customizing it. Sky's the limit there. So you would just cut this out. I have the glue out just to illustrate that it would be just as easy to put, you know, a zigzag of glue on here, glue that down, and then maybe poke your hole through it at that point. All right, so then once that's all decorated, take your pencil, put it in there, find a nice spot outside. Um, if it's going to be out in the open, make sure it's not raining because that will probably ruin your, your, your sundial. And put it somewhere where it's in the sun. And as the sun moves throughout the day, you'll see your shadow move around. And maybe you could mark off what time it is at that time, what time, what time. I would love to see what your sundials look like if you make one. Uh, take a picture of it and put it out on your porch or wherever you get some sunlight. Try to get it facing north. That would be the most accurate. And I would love to see how you decorate it. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Uh, it's been super fun. I am super excited to see what you make. And remember, I'm going to keep making crafting videos. You'll see some ones uh, geared towards adults, some other ones geared towards young children. And these will all be hosted on the Dream Bank Facebook page. So be sure to check it out. And there's a bunch of other events going on there too. Some live, some videos, and you can see what we have going on. So thanks for tuning in and we will see you next time.